Yeah. Interesting quote, man. I must admit, I personally haven't really followed that quote properly, but I do completely agree with it and understand it. And I want, I just want everyone else to really understand it as well, especially in GTA 5 context where mistakes and collisions are extremely costly, especially under these conditions without catch up or slipstream. If you do end up losing a position to someone else's mistake, it can get extremely aggravating and it can get extremely difficult to recover in those situations because of GTA 5 pace and its own individual requirement for that. Once everybody does understand it and becomes sort of the equivalent, you know, get to the equivalent stage of pace, you know, it does become extremely difficult in those situations. So what happens when everybody is on equivalent pace? You know, it's taken about one and a half years to get to that stage. Now, a lot of people do understand how the game works and that's fine. You know, that's great. A lot of people are now quick as each other, but that's not everything about racing though, is it? There's a lot more to it. There's racecraft and everyone's got their own set of uh, perspective looking at that and having to really understand how to approach situations. There's a lot more to it. Each and every single person got their own little ups and downs for racing. And now when it comes to opinions, that's where I get a little bit iffy with because the way I see opinions work on GTA Fire Racing and when it comes to discussions, I see it as a lot of people talking on behalf of their comfort zone rather than stating factual information that is to do with racing. So when I, what I mean by comfort zone is basically whatever they see through their perspective as the easiest and the most comfortable position to be, especially under racing. That, that could be to do with opinions based on racetracks, opinions based on cars, whatever. But the way I see things is strictly based on a particular limit set or is a skill boundary that is set that you need to hit at the highest level of competition. That's just the way I see it. Even if I'm not capable of doing it, I will still aim to do it. But yes, that is my opinion. But I'm stating it factually based on what everybody else is capable of doing if they were to push themselves at the same sort of dedication, passionate way of, that I'm personally doing it. So here's the thing. Okay, patience. Patience is a huge thing, okay, which a lot of people do lack, even myself at certain situations. But I'm slowly learning. You know, I'm learning myself as well, having to adapt to different situations. But what I want people to understand is even if you understand the way the pace works in this game, if you do have pace, if you are like, let's say, you know, one of the quickest drivers on a particular track. That does not mean you're going to use that pace every single time. That means you are able to switch on and off because when there's other drivers around you and you know that they're not in the same equivalent pace, you need to be able to expect collisions to occur. You need to be able to expect mistakes to be made. Now you need to be making sure that you are reacting to that situation by braking. That doesn't matter if you're on the quickest lap. That doesn't matter if you're taking the optimal lines. You have to still respect the other drivers around and you have to break and you have to sacrifice that speed and make sure that whatever happens, even if the player's mistakes causes you to crash, you have to accept that and move on. You can't sit there on the side of the track and complain. You can't rage quit just because things aren't going your way. Heck, even myself, I have sat on the side of a track when I got taken out at the start of the race or even I've rage quit several times as well. But I admit to that and I know that's a wrong thing to do and that's extremely childish. But I accept, I learned through that. And of course now it's just all about understanding what racing really and truly means, you know? It's just you being able to respect others. And that is only applies to these conditions, of course. If you don't like this, if you think this is way too serious for GTA 5, if you think I'm being way too serious, by all means, I respect your opinion. I don't give a shit if you're incapable of racing like this. Honestly, have fun. You know, do what you like, you know. If you guys think we're taking this way too seriously, heck, this sort of stuff is what makes it fun for us. If it doesn't make fun for you, fucking by all means, jump over a building with a ramp, you know. Put on catch up on Slipstream take people out for your joy if that's something that makes you laugh go for it man there's not many other things in the world that makes you laugh fuck it i don't give a shit do that great anyway moving on denzel so here's the thing man this is what worried me at first and i knew it would get to a certain point where it will happen and it did happen within the community although we're a small community there is a massive splitting of opinions that has caused the splitting so now it's taken about nearly one and a half years for people to un fully understand what is required for GTA 5 racing and how to get to that pace level that is required for consistently going quick around the track. 
they think they're some sort of robots now you know they, they obviously want to separate themselves from the crowd because they think they're the gods of racing you know but what they don't understand is that they are humans just like us and they make mistakes too so i find it annoying and i did say i was afraid of this happening at some point on gta 5 obviously when people understand the way the game works there's going to be this battle of ego this battle of confidence where people have built this confidence to say hey look i'm better than you look at me I'm, i can go consistently around the track five laps straight and getting this amount of lap times every single time i'm better than you you're shit no that's not racing brother you're hot lapping under racing conditions that makes no sense because you cannot do that you cannot break when someone else is not going at your pace why because you don't have that understanding with the racing knowledge because you are narrow-minded because all you know is one thing and that is the one thing you learned from the very start is just hot lapping but that's the issue though a lot of people right there's, there's a thing that you need to understand there's a thing called hot lapping to build your pace but then to be able to use that pace as a switch you know to be able to turn it on and to turn it off at situations that really and truly do matter under these facing conditions that is what I'm trying to say. I want people to understand it's not always about flooring around corners. It's not always about taking optimal lines. It's about adapting to situations. It's about respecting the other people's driving capabilities and not being selfish and not being ignorant and narrow-minded about just from your perspective, but making sure that you look at it from all perspectives. And when you fight for podium positions, when you fight for any position, you're making sure that you get to that position legitimately and properly using racecraft without shoving someone out the way without just always prioritizing the apex and just going for the inside corner and inside line all the time remember people there's multiple lines in racing right and you know people always seem to just see the optimal lines even under these conditions and that's the worrying part because people cannot adapt to different things people cannot visualize different corners and not just that one particular corner what i mean by visualizing different corners is when you see a car already prioritizing the inside line that means you need to be able to create another corner around the car meaning the outside line which a lot of people are so blind to see and that is something that i want people to learn people to really adapt to those situations to be able to use photo control to be able to carry that speed to be able to execute outside moves and only a handful of people can do that on this game and that's very sad to say and i'm saying not even those the quickest are capable of doing this people they, you could be the quickest driver in the game but you won't be able to pull off one outside move because you just don't have the racing knowledge Look, all I'm saying is, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's going to have ego. Everyone's going to have confidence once they get to a certain understanding and certain level that is equivalent to everyone else. But one thing that people won't have is the same understanding of reacting to situations and being able to adapt to variable situations that are not always given to you on the plate every single time and every single race. That is also do with individual skill, which everyone's got a separate amount of. And that is called anticipating situations and adapting to other people's breaking points and reacting to it every single time and that some people do it consistently others do it time to time some people just constantly keep making mistakes you could be the quickest driver as i said but you may have different levels of that every single time and every single track so all i'm saying is if you know that you're confident that you have the pace for you to be able to race consistently and be able to go quick then stop worrying about it you know stop always having to think that you have to go quick you know be, be able to switch it around a bit and really use that for your advantage whenever you require to use it but in situations when you're bumper to bumper with someone that doesn't mean you have to do that all the time and expect them to do it because expectations leads to failures is a famous quote but you have to really really understand that you know have to be prepared with your brakes because your braking points do change and optimal lines do change whenever the car in front is is near you and the rear bumper is just about to hit your front bumper you have to react to their braking because they may take the optimal braking points but your car is uh, you know one car left behind them so that your braking point is going to be different so don't expect the braking points to be same just because of the quickest lap being that with that particular braking point that doesn't mean you're going to do it in a normal racing environment that is the difference so at the end of the day people i'm just trying to set an example for what's right under these conditions without catch up or slipstream there's a lot of people showing interest in this i'm just here trying to help i'm not saying i'm the best driver in gta 5 i'm not saying i'm the quickest there's so many people out there that are better than me okay but what i am saying is that i'm trying to help those who show interest in this and the only other gta 5 youtubers who's doing the same is briffy1322 and th that is it that that is it you know every other gta 5 youtuber may not show interest in this 
and, and I can also tell just from the game piece because they simply can't drive for shit. But that's just my honest opinion, you know. And and I do read these comments, and people do state that, you know, quite obviously, you guys can't drive for shit. And then people, when people state on my videos saying that GTA 5 doesn't require skill, I sit there rather baffled, you know. Now what the fuck is this guy taking this shit seriously for? Look at this. Oh shit! Look at this. Oh lord! I don't know where that comes from, and especially when those who say. Go and, go and play this and that. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Uh, now, now I just see it as people trolling. But anyway, this discussion will keep going on and on. But what at the end of the day, do what you like the most and what makes it the most fun for you. Uh, you. You know, I keep saying this. Uh, this is what makes it fun for us. It's a little community, but it's extremely fun. And I do hope more people do show interest in this. And I do like that a lot of people are practicing because it's not easy. It's not easy to consistently do well in this game um, it requires a lot it's extremely draining at times and sometimes it can get a bit depressing and stressful especially when people do end up taking you out because of recklessness and ego or expectations are put on you and this sort of stuff should not be there in the first place people really need to just understand that this game is extremely costly when it comes to mistakes and you lot you should not be putting yourself under a, a, a situation where you make a mistake due to you pushing and being aggressive with your pace and knowing that you know everything about the game rather than just respecting your position and really just holding it and being consistent without pushing it too much and really and truly just making sure that you are having the battles there and enjoying the overtakes or enjoying the defending rather than wanting to split the gap up all the time and thinking you're god or some shit but really and truly just keep your position man don't cause a mess for other people don't cause up class the fucks as you saw at the start of this video you know me and the white comet but this is a sick track it's one of the best tracks in the game simply because it requires the most racecraft out of any any track i've ever played man you know there's so much to do there's so much patience required there's so much concentration you, it, there's no room for error you know you can easily lose car control and carry in optimal speeds then that's where you have to switch on and off which i was doing for the entire race and really this video is set an example of what is pretty much gta fire race all about and what you you can do in this game and the potentials from it so I really hope a lot of people out there who show interest in this can see it from this point of view and to see what's right and what's wrong and just try it out there and try it for yourselves. Try it for yourselves and, and have fun. Have fun doing this, you know, under these conditions. And there are crews out there for you to be able to do this, you know. Like I said, join my crew, man. My, my crew is rather full, but I do tend to clear it out often for those who are inactive and, and to get the active players in people think i'm kicking them out intentionally no that's because i want to clear the crew out for those who want to join again can join back you know it's not something that i'm purposely kicking you out because you're bad or anything I, i'm not judging i don't ever judge a gta 5 man I, people have this notion also that you know sometimes people judge you for because you're going too slow oh uh, i need to fucking push it and choke no just fucking race at your own pace hold your position and that's all that fucking matters so anyway people hopefully you guys have enjoyed that little discussion I do hope people do uh, show more interest in this game. It is a definitely a viable game uh, for racing. One of the most intense racing games I've ever played for uh, player requirements and how much it drains you out in certain situations. I love the whole playlist system. I love the racing system. And it's one of the best mechanics for any racing game I've ever played in a while. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I do appreciate the support. And for those who think I take this seriously, well, you simply haven't experienced that thrill, that intensity, that side-by-side -side action, that level of respect for the other player because you think they might not respect you and you have this little bit of psychological notion that you might lose so you get a little bit iffy and you start panicking and then you go kaboom, explosions, parts flying off and that's your judgement. No, that is you being narrow-minded. Please be open. Please look at it from this perspective and then once you do try it make a judgment and get back to me you know practice and then get back to me because this game is not easy it does require practice so once you do understand it once you've experienced the side-by-side -side action with other cars around you and really and truly made that chemistry with the players then come back to me and then tell me and give me a proper judgment of this game because if you haven't tried it you cannot make a judgment thank you very much people i'll see you guys next time shaggy Good night, peace. Yay! Yeah. Hey guys, Shaggy here, right? Hey, yeah, Gene. The results are finally in for top 10 fastest sports cards on GTA 5 on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I personally feel like quite a few things.